think I want to just speak a little bit more in particular about the light of attention. Because this is just a wonderful capacity that we have to, to place our attention uh, on any given thing. And I think most of us know from having attention placed on us, especially if it's a, a more um, nurturing or uh, validating, empowering kind of attention upon us, that that the attention and that gift of attention really begets a sense of thriving and well-being. And we see this with any living thing, you know, if we give attention to our plants or our pets or to children, or if we've experienced attention in, in ways that is nourishing and nurturing, it brings about a, a sense of well-being and it brings a sense of consciousness coming alight and brightening and thriving and uh, feeling more interconnected and less separate and isolated. And so this gift of our attention is just such a phenomenal power that we have. And often we engage it um, in a way, I can't really speak for you, but I think um, my impression of a lot of human beings is that their attention is placed outwardly to such an extent that what's happening in their environment, or it could be also in the bot into the body, or this larger body of happenings in the play of life, that the emphasis of attention is on the objects of attention, and um, what what objects of of attention we prefer to look at or don't prefer or are in accord and alignment with and are not. But I'm hoping that this guided talk will also invigorate the consciousness of the sense of, of attention as a function and as an expression of, of who and what we are that um, in and of itself can be very life-giving in, in a way that um, is not only experienced through our stewardship of that attention to, as I was saying in the guided meditation, to have our attention be placed on what's vitalizing and, and life-giving, but also just through the mystery of that light of attention. There's a, a kind of mystery that that attention even exists at all. And that we even have the, the power to consciously direct it. Sometimes it feels less conscious, like our attention is hijacked into certain trains of thought or certain body sensations. But through practice, we can, we can really develop a, a strong muscle in, a, in the ability to, to direct attention. And um, to experience the gift of that and to focus on the gift of that. And that's um, part of what I see is the process of being more conscious is, is the more intentional direction of our attention and the, the entering into the very mystery of that light of attention and sensing that it almost seems to arise out of nowhere and yet be called to respond and engage in, in life in, in certain ways. And our body awareness can, can really be a wonderful aid in letting us know when our attention is placed in ways that is life-giving and promotes thriving. And it feels like then the, the very arising of this uh, conscious awareness of the body then starts to sing with the conscious placement of attention of, of the mind or our focused attention. And that when those two are in greater harmony, there's also a, a sense that that harmonious way of being sings with this outer in, environment we could call the universal body or the universal awareness. And that's when all of the, or at least some of the three primary expressions of awareness, I haven't really spoken about formless awareness, which is another, but 
another primary expression. But when these three uh, expressions of awareness as directed, unbounded, and body awareness come together, there's this um, greater mix and blending in a more seamless way that begets consciousness and consciousness coming alive and consciousness experiencing itself in form, in the form of our body, in the form of this larger body of life. Mm -hmm.